Welcome to MCN. Today we're going to talk about something which most of us as motorcyclists we don't really like talking about and that's crashing. In particular what to do if you come across a motorcycle accident. Now that could be one of your mates who falls off on a group ride out or it could be that you just come across an accident site where a motorcyclist has been hurt. And the sobering truth is that what we do in those first minutes before the emergency services turn up can make a massive difference to the outcomes of that person. And it kind of sounds melodramatic, but it could be the difference between life and death. So we're here today with Doc Bike, which is a charity founded by Dr. Ian Mew. So Ian, tell us, what does Doc Bike do? So Doc Bike is a charity. We put air ambulance, critical care, doctors and paramedics onto a motorbike for three main reasons. Yes, we're there to help pick up the pieces if um, a motorcyclist has a crash or anyone needs critical care, not just motorcyclists. But we're also invested in teaching people what to do if they come across a crash and how to manage the scene and what they can realistically do to keep someone alive until we can get there in the helicopter or the ambulance. And then we're also really keen because we go to so many bike crashes to use our knowledge of why bike crashes happen to make motorcyclists aware of why they happen and what they can do to avoid being in a crash themselves. So now we're going to go to a crash site which we've mocked up so Ian can talk us through what to do and what not to do if you come across a motorcyclist who's fallen off. So we're here at our mocked up crash site and as you can see behind me we've got a car that's pulled out. Our motorcyclist, Alison, has crashed into it, gone over the bonnet and has landed here. So now I'm going to talk to Ian about what I should be doing. Now the first thing I'm thinking is as I'm approaching on my bike, where do I park? Yeah, and it's really tempting to drive right up to the crash, but actually you need to keep the casualty safe so they don't get run over twice. You need to keep yourself safe so that car doesn't come around the corner and smack into you. So actually parking your bike down the road is really important. Um, if you're on a 30 mile an hour road, you want to be about 40, 50 metres down the road. Don't park in the kerb because people will think you've just broken down, but park more towards the central um, line. You've still got to allow emergency services vehicles to get around you. And of course, if you're on a corner, you need to either be round the corner or send someone to go around the corner so cars don't come round the corner at 60 miles an hour and smack into you. Dual carriageway, obviously, is a completely different thing. You're 70 mile an hour road. You're talking, you know, going about 500 metres down the road. But just look after yourself. Make sure you don't become a casualty and try and make sure that the road is shut down in both directions to keep you and the casualty safe. OK, great. So I've parked in the right place, got my hazards on. I'm now approaching Alison, our crash victim. What should be going through my mind? What's the order of priorities? And it's really tempting, especially if you know the rider, if you've been riding in a group, to run straight up and find out how they're doing, because that's our natural instinct. Actually, you need to call for help. You've got a motorcyclist, they've had a high impact incident, um, they are not moving, that's, that's bad news. So get on the phone, ring 999. Doesn't matter if your phone hasn't got a signal, um, still ring 999, and if there is a mast on a different network around, it will process your call. Um, let them know where you are, let them know how many casualties are involved, but get that help coming to you. Because as soon as you get involved in the casualty, you'll forget to ring for help and you'll be there for half an hour. What if, as is often the case, I don't really know where I am? Yeah. And so I've turned up somewhere in the peaks. What, what, what do you do? Still make the call. Um, if there are other people on scene, some of them may be local, get them to make the 999 call. And actually they can act as your communications while you're dealing with the patient but still make the call. Call takers are used to people not knowing where they are. They will be able to work out where you've come from and going to. But also, if you've got what three words on your phone, that's like gold dust to us. That pinpoints you to a three meter um, square area and we'll be there in no time. Okay, the what three words details will be on the description of the video at the end. So I've parked in the right place. I've called 999, told them where I am. Now what? 
because my inclination now is to properly panic. That's fine. And this is why Biker Down courses will talk you through what you need to do. But essentially, we've learned from the wars and conflicts in Afghanistan that trauma, um, the main cause of death, is bleeding. So what you can realistically do that's going to have the greatest effect, other than calling for help, is keeping Alison's blood inside her body. So you can do that in a sequence of things where you go for direct pressure, um, tourniquets, basically do whatever you need to do to keep her blood inside her body until we can get there on the helicopter. Great. I mean, we haven't got time for a full first aid course. Yeah. So just take me through the basics of how do I know if she's suffering from massive bleeding? I mean, how do I know the difference between a bad cut and catastrophic bleeding? And it is that catastrophic thing that we're talking about, because otherwise we're talking about airway, breathing, circulation. But if we go through airway breathing and we're dealing with helmets and breathing and someone's bleeding out, they will have lost all of their circulating volume by the time you get to circulation. If someone's got blood pumping out, it's spurting into the air or it's sp visibly spreading across the floor, that's catastrophic bleeding. Right. You need to stop that and, and you need to do it fast. So say Alison's bleeding out of her thigh, it's quite catastrophic bleeding, you've got big vessels in there. Actually, we need to stop that, so let's go and do it. So bikers, we've generally got gloves on. Keep them on, they'll protect you. Um, you've got blood everywhere, it's, it's just a good thing to do. But what we need to do is pack this. If you've got any cloth, T-shirt, anything like that, we want to pack that into the wound. Neck, Neck buff, buff is ideal. Yep. So I'm going to pop that in the wound, pack it right inside, get my knuckles, lock my elbow, put my shoulder above and push down. And it will hurt, it's, but we've got does to that, save a life. Okay? Does that hurt, Al? Yes. <laughs> yes, it hurts. So loads of pressure. Yeah, and it's, okay. it's, it's, it's no nonsense stuff. It's not triangular bandages and plasters. We need to keep her blood inside her. We need to save her life. And not putting enough pressure on, we won't stop the bleeding. And that, presumably, you apply that arms wherever there's major loss of blood. So there's a sequential way of doing it. You start with direct pressure. Um, if you need to, you can put a tourniquet on and you fashion that out of a shirt sleeve and just twist it. Do whatever you need to do to keep the blood inside. Doing something is better than doing nothing. And if you can keep the blood from coming out, happy days. Even for someone with no medical training like me, have Absolutely. a crack at a tourniquet. Absolutely. You will really save someone's life just by doing what you can. OK, great. OK, so um, let's say that there's no catastrophic bleeding. Yeah. What next? So now we can actually talk to Alison because we haven't had the sudden thing yet. And how are you doing, Alison? I'm fine, thank you. So Alison's talking to us. That's a really good sign. It tells me that her airway is open, that she's getting air going down into her lungs, that oxygen's going across into her blood, that there's enough blood to go round her body to make her brain work, and that she hasn't got a head injury sufficient enough to make her unconscious. So telling the ambulance service that someone is conscious and breathing actually gives us a lot of information. Um, it doesn't mean to say that she's not unwell and she may well be bleeding internally and getting some information like if she's on any medicines, if she's allergic to anything, is quite a useful thing at this stage because if she does deteriorate before the ambulance service gets there, you've got information that's useful that you can give to them. So I see, so before, if she, for instance, she becomes unconscious, yeah. you want to get that information nice and early. Absolutely. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I've parked up, made the scene safe, as I'm walking, I'm calling, I've called 999. Yeah. I've checked for catastrophic bleeding. Yeah. There isn't any. Fine. But this time, uh, when I say, hello, Alison, yeah. there's no response. She's not responding. So what do I do then, aside from panic? So don't panic. Yeah. Um, make sure the ambulance service know that she's not responding because right. that will get you the air ambulance a lot quicker. So keep them on the phone. Keep them on the phone. Put them on the speaker, put it next to you while you're dealing with the right. casualty. Um, we need to see whether she's got an airway. So we are, um, advanced life support talks about look, listen and feel when you're assessing the airway. That's fine if you're indoors because you can look and see if the chest is rising and falling. You can um, listen, see if you can hear any wind. You can see if you can feel any um, breath on your cheek. But we're outside, there might be cars driving by. It's really hard for us. Yes, look and see if the chest is going up and down or if there's a seesaw movement that suggests that the back of the tongue might be falling on the back of the throat and stopping her from breathing. Um, look at her helmet. She's got a flip-top lid. I can tell that because there's a red bit. So actually, I can just flip her lid back and there's another red bit on this helmet. I've never seen this before, but I can just open up a chin strap and just see if that makes a difference. If I'm on my own, um, I'm really going to try and improve her airway because if I don't do anything, she's going to die from asphyxiation. 
so I can try rolling her over. Um, if I'm with someone, I can try and take a helmet off. These are all things that we teach on Biker Down, and I really suggest people go and do that because that's where you'll practice it and learn how to do it properly. And, and people are worried about taking off helmets. People say, never take my helmet off. People are worried about, don't move the casualty. She's not breathing, especially if she's trying to breathe, um, but she's obstructing her airway. If we just leave her there, she's gonna die. So doing something is always gonna be better than doing nothing. Um, you can try rolling her to one side so that gravity pulls a jaw forward. Um, and that's, if I'm on my own, it's not pretty, but I'm just gonna grab her arm across here and just pull her over on one side. And then just by doing that, I can reassess and see whether that has pulled her jaw forward enough to allow her to breathe effectively. And you're looking to see that her chest is going up and down. You've lost that seesaw movement. If you're with someone else and you've done a biker down course, you can take the helmet off. Um, but you really do need to go on a biker down course to learn how to do that. Okay. How are you doing, Ali? And what about, so you've, you've rolled her on a side, yeah. hasn't made any difference. Yeah, taking the helmet off. Taking the helmet off, still not home. So at yeah. what point, I mean, we haven't got time to go into yeah. massive detail about CPR, but yeah. are there any basics so that I could take away now? Anybody, for whatever cause, that is unconscious and not breathing properly, start CPR. Doesn't matter if they clutch their chest walking down the road, if they've been eating a sausage sandwich and they choke, Anyone that's unconscious and not breathing properly starts CPR. Basically, hard and fast in the center of the chest, um, do a, 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 a biker down course, we'll teach you how to do it. So no mouth to mouth, none of that? Just you don't have in. to do mouth to mouth, hard and fast, center of the chest, compression only CPR, make sure the ambulance service on 999 right. know that you're doing yeah. it. Nothing else trumps that, you, we will get to you very quickly. Okay, great. Anything else I should know? Or I mean, it's, that's, it's all there is. It's very simple. Keep the scene safe. Stop yourself from being knocked over. Call for help. Control any catastrophic hemorrhage and then assess their airway and breathing. Um, if they're talking to you, don't move them. Don't take the helmet off. Um, if they're not talking to you, then you've just got to make the best of a bad situation and try and get them breathing or try and help them. But make sure the ambulance service know what you're doing at all times. That's great. And let's just tell me quickly, We've mentioned Biker Down several times. Yeah. I've done the course, which is fantastic, and I wish I'd done it 30 years ago when I started riding bikes. But just tell me what its purpose is and basically what it does. So Biker Down, it's free. Um, we generally run them of an evening when people can go to them after work. Um, it's taught only by emergency service personnel. And we will teach you how to manage the scene of a crash. We'll teach you realistically what you can do to keep someone alive until we get there. And then equally in the third module, which is the best bit, I think, we give you some tips and tricks on how not to get knocked off your bike yourself. Really worth doing. Run all over the UK by the fire service or by Doc Bike. Book in, it's free. Why not? And where do I find out where my local one is? Just go to bikerdown.co.uk. Um, they run all over the country or go to the Doc Bike website under Biker Down and we'll point you to your nearest course. That's brilliant. And personally, I went on the Biker Down course. Best thing I've done to do with motorcycling for a long, long time. Highly recommended. Uh, so I'd just like to thank Ian for your My time. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. And Alison, thanks so much for being quiet for 20 minutes, which to be honest, I've never seen before. Tech, a range of performance parts for bikers. Introducing our high-grade chromium universal ball joint. Every piece a one-off. Built for life from the finest chromium alloy. Bespoke fitted, which makes it perfect for reconnecting femurs to damaged hip joints. These are parts we don't want you to have because bikes repair easier than bikers. See the range at bikeatechshop.co.uk